Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nolly. So, in this series of videos, I want to delve in specifically into the three types of reactions that I mentioned in the previous video, which is precipitation reaction, acid base, and redox. And we are going to talk specifically about these three reactions because they tend to involve aqueous species as part of the um, reaction. So, precipitation reactions are double displacement reactions where one of the products forms a precipitate or a solid, so it, in other words it would come out of solution. Um, Acid-base reactions are basically double displacement reactions where you'll see later on that one of the reactants is an acid, the other reactant is a base, and one of the products is always water. And then redox reactions are those reactions where electrons are being transferred from one reactant to another. So as I said uh, just now, the precipitation reaction is the double displacement reaction where you uh, form a precipitate or a solid as a result of the reaction. Here's an example. When you mix mercury 1 nitrate and potassium iodide both in aqueous solution, so they're both soluble, once you uh, put them in together, you'll immediately see this yellow solid forming as soon as the two solutions uh, come in contact with each other. And that yellow uh, solid or yellow precipitate is mercury-1 iodide. And that's what's illustrated here in this particular picture. So um, the result of a precipitation reaction is usually one of the uh, compounds will precipitate and you, you can see it pretty clearly in the test tube. So I think one of the issues that student, uh, students have at the beginning and trying to figure out whether you see a precipitate or not is, is just what a precipitate is. So remember that a precipitate is just a solid. So as soon as two things are being combined together and you see a solid forming, then that means there's a precipitate. So if you can uh, experimentally, what you uh, through observation, what you can see is the following. If you can see something, if you can see straight through the test tube, in other words, there's nothing that's blocking you from looking straight through the test tube, that means that you have no precipitate. However, if you have something that's somehow blocking you so you can't see straight behind this test tube, then there's something that's blocking it and whatever is blocking it is a precipitate. Okay, So even though this might not look like a solid, eventually if you let it down or if you centrifuge it, it would form a solid at the bottom of the test tube. So the fact that you can't see through um, a solution in a test tube means that there's some solid that's formed in that solution and that's what we call a precipitate. Whereas if you can see through it like this then there's no precipitate so that's just an aqueous solution. Okay, And it's possible that the aqueous solution itself might have different colors so this one here I'm showing you is colorless but it might be that you have a yellow color but no precipitate and you can tell because the solution is yellow but you can still see through that yellow solution to the other side. Okay. So the next question is, if you have two ionic compounds, right? let's say go back to this example, let's say I don't give you the products and you have these two ionic compounds in aqueous state and they react with each other and you want to know is one of the products going to form a precipitate, how would you be able to predict that? Well, it's simple. Remember that we talked about these solubility rules in a couple of videos ago and I said that different uh, ionic compounds have different solubility in water. So what you can do is you can use those solubility rules to predict whether the product is going to form a precipitate or not. And the only thing you have to remember is that these precipitation reactions, they're all double displacement reaction. So you can predict the product by just swapping the cations of the two aqueous salts. So again, in this context, for example, you'll take HG1 and you partner it up with I, and then you take potassium and you partner up with nitrate, which is exactly what those uh, salts are, and then you go back to your solubility table and try to see is this salt soluble and is this salt soluble. If you do that, you'll find that the mercury-1 iodide is not soluble, but then the potassium nitrate is, and that's how we get to this uh, uh, physical states written here, solid for this guy and aqueous for that one. Okay. Um, now, one thing that's important is if you check the solubility table and you find that both products that are formed are 
um, soluble that means that this is really no reaction happening okay and I'll show you in an example uh, in a second but I want to review that solubility table again this 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 is a solubility table that I gave you a couple of videos ago and it's really fairly similar to all the other solubility tables that are out there uh, there's another solubility table that I took out from the textbook and it's available on the lecture slide uh, but they, they all have very similar rules basically and, and you just need to familiarize yourself with those rules for solubility okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at this example and basically the idea here is to predict the products that are going to be formed and then to uh, predict whether it's going to be a precipitate or not and it says here if there's no precipitate you have to write no reaction or you put a slash mark over the reaction arrow okay and so we're and then the next thing it's asking is write the net ionic equation if there's a reaction okay so I'm gonna work through this uh, on the next slide okay so here we have the first one the reaction one is BACL2 plus Na2SO4 they're both aqueous and the first thing that we're asked to do is just predict the products of these uh, reaction now you remember what I said earlier it's a double displacement reaction so basically what you need to do is just swap the cations okay so you're gonna take this cations and then in the product it's going to be partner up with the sulfate so you're gonna have barium sulfate as one of your product barium is a plus two cation sulfate is a negative two anion so then they just form barium sulfate uh, as a compound and we're gonna put in the state of matter in a second because we need to check the solubility table for that and then the other product is of course if you take the sodium and you partner it up with chloride so you have sodium chloride and again we're gonna look up solubility table to see the state of matter there if you want to balance the reaction you need to put two in front of sodium chloride and that should work out okay so now what we need to do is figure out what these are, right? It's either one of them for, forming a, a precipitate, and to do that we need to consult the solubility table. So remember, the two products that we had earlier was sodium chloride and barium sulfate, okay? So if you look at uh, these lists, one of the first things you need to find is chlorides and compounds of group elements. That's because sodium chloride belongs to that both both of those groups right sodium obviously is a group one element and you notice that in rule number one all compounds of group one elements are soluble so immediately that tells you that the sodium chloride is soluble so in other words we don't really have a precipitate for sodium chloride the second one that we have to look for is our sulfate okay and for sulfate you really need to kind of scroll down here because none of these is sulfate right now but there is something about barium being exception and so on, but it's not a sulfate salt. So we have to um, go down here, and rule number seven here, it says all sulfates are soluble, except when it's formed with calcium, strontium, barium, and the ions listed in rule number six. But we don't care about rule number six because barium sulfate is one of our products in the reaction that we worked on earlier. So now we know given this solubility rule that barium sulfate is insoluble because that's the exception to the rule right the rule is all sulfates are soluble but barium is one of the exceptions okay so now we can go back here and complete this uh, solving this problem by complete by adding the state of matter in this case barium sulfate is going to be a solid and sodium chloride is going to be aqueous this is based from our solubility rule right now remember that the other part of that question is asking you to write the net ionic equation so if you want to write the net ionic equation remember you really are going to write it only for things that are non aqueous right you can write the complete ionic equation first so if I do that I'm gonna start with Ba2 plus 2 chlorine minus plus 2 sodium plus sulfate this is the reactant and then the product I have barium sulfate remember that stays together because it's solid so it doesn't 
doesn't break apart into ions anymore because it's just stuck together as a solid and then you have two sodium and two chloride because they're they're aqueous now you can see that the chloride can cancel and the sodium can cancel they're both spectator ions so then your net ionic equation is just barium aqueous sulfate aqueous forming barium sulfate solid okay so that's your net ionic equation okay so our second uh, question there in that problem was to predict the reaction of these two and then to see if they form any products or not any solid products or not so in this case you have sodium acetate this is the acetate ion you have calcium bromide and of course again to predict the products it's fairly simple it's a double di displacement reaction so you're going to take the sodium and you combine that with the bromide there so I get sodium bromide as one of my first products and then the other product would just be combining the calcium with the acetate anion calcium is a plus two cation acetate on the other hand is a minus one anion you know that because it's when it combines with sodium it's just a there's no multiplication here so then as a result the salt itself would look something like that and then the question is what is the state of matter for these two well remember sodium bromide we know earlier it was you know when we look at that up that solubility rule all sodium ions all sodium compounds are soluble so we're pretty safe in saying that this is aqueous this is a little bit more difficult so we have to go back to that solubility rule and take a look what happens to acetate salts um, is there anything uh, you know unique about them so here's the solubility rule and you can see here that the rule number two it says nitrates chlorates perchlorates and acetates are soluble okay so matter of fact all acetate salts are going to be soluble so if we go back to our problem basically this salt is also going to be soluble so in other words when you have all of these being soluble there really is no reaction you can see that because if you were to write the complete ionic equation of this reaction okay this is your reactant and then this is your product okay let's say it goes to sodium plus bromide calcium and acetate notice that earlier I didn't balance it so I can balance it now um, there should be two here in order to make that equation balance so I'm going to have two sodium on this side two acetate calcium and then two sodium and uh, two bromide and then two acetate you notice that because they're all aqueous they just all cancel out right so none of them forms a compound so as, as a result there's really no reaction so the way you would write a reaction like this would be the following you would write an A um, sodium acetate plus calcium bromide and you put the arrow and you put a slash over it sometimes people also write it this way put the arrow and then you put NR which means no reaction either way is okay alright in the next video we'll talk about uh, acid-base reactions